In the 90s, Playmates Toys made the deepest line of Star Trek action figures in history. My name's Keith, and I'm a collector working towards owning all 284. I've been a Trek fan for almost 35 years, and most people are sick of me talking about it. But somehow I've convinced my old friend Mike to review them with me on... Look at my Star Trek toys! What's up? Everybody, <laughs> I waited for it! <laughs> We've not planned anything that well in years. <laughs> no, Mike was very excited about his whoosh. So uh, I, I knew I, I knew immediately that I had forgotten to respect the whoosh. Uh, but Keith, uh, do you know how much time it takes hmm. to find rip off a YouTube swoosh and alter mm -hmm. it auto, uh, slightly so that you don't have to put attribute anybody? Attribute? Attribute? Should we start off? <laughs> the, the word you're looking for is steal. The word you're looking for is flat out thievery, but no, we're sticking with it. You are watching Look at My Star Trek Toys. Uh, I am Keith Varney. That's Mike and Deglio, the thief. And today we are talking about something uh, truly extraordinary. I'm I'm super excited to talk about. I've been I've been planning to do an episode on this for a while, uh, and we are in a very uh, unique episode of Look at My Star Trek Toys because today. Uh, we are not doing Playmates figures. We are not doing custom Playmates figures, but we're doing something for them. And we are doing an entire episode on one single thing. And that is Joshua Cronin's extraordinary Deep Space Nine set, play set, that he built himself entirely by hand. Uh, it is giant and specific and detailed, and we're going to break it all down here with our brand new authority on Deep Space Nine. Mike, as we, uh, as I'm sure many of you know, Mike and I do a review show of Deep Space Nine. It's called Keith and Mike Watch Deep Space Nine. Very clever title. Uh, but we uh, are going episode by episode through Deep Space Nine. And right now, as we're airing this, we're about to record season three, episode two. Uh, which is really exciting. And so now, the reason I waited is to give Mike a little bit of time to get enough context to appreciate and see all the things uh, that Joshua did. Uh, but before we do, before mm -hmm. we break into this incredible, uh, incredible playset, uh, Mike, we need to introduce our patrons who are helping to subsidize this show. And guess what? Spoiler alert, Joshua might be one of them. Yeah, it's like he it's like he's spidey senses were tingling, Keith, and he's like, mm. I better pony up so that they don't trash my work on the Internet. Not that we would do that. <laughs> Why would we do that? I don't know. We could maybe that was our niche. We were like, you know, what? we're going to start talking smack. But we don't do that now. We're like, very lovely. like 105 nice. episodes in. Yeah. We're like, no, man, we're going to be savage. Uh, well, of course we wouldn't do that, but uh, I will say on the Deep Space Nine front, Keith, um, I, uh, I, um, I, I almost saw a spoiler today. Almost. Oh, no. Yep. Uh, because, you know, started Googling some things and now the no, algorithm's all over the place. Never well, I'll say this. I, I was curious as to like what other Deep Space Nine content is on the YouTube. So I did some searching to see what other what? kind of podcasts like ours might be out there. And there are plenty of people who discuss episode by episode, but you know what they do, Keith? What do they, they do? They do it with brevity. Ah. And specificity. And we say, no, 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 no. We They're want to talk for hours. Of your time. No. <laughs> no. They, they take your time seriously, and they, they put a lot of thought into it. We put a lot of work into it, less thought, and we don't care about your time. We're going to talk for hours. Clearly. So clearly. that is the that is the juxtaposition you've been wanting. Anyway, so that's I've stalled the pitch long enough. The patron? <laughs> <laughs> so if you don't value your time at all, and, and you, want you don't us, value your money, <laughs> and you want to pay to hear us, actually, you can hear us free on the YouTube. You're just helping pay for it. You're, you're you subsidizing. get more of us. You get a lot more of us you can't get on the YouTube. That's true. Uh, you can you can join the fine folks like Brian Kaufman and Casey Clark at the top tier. Bren Joshua, Andrew Hayes, Jorge Novo, and the mysterious Worf's boot shivs, Richard Coleman. See Welcome to the team. Welcome, Richard. I'm sorry you're at the bottom, but you know what they say? Sometimes the bottom is the top. CRM Productions, Charles Babbage, Nicolay, 
Lodovich, <laughs> Lobachevsky. We're out of practice, Keith. At Grim underscore toys and delusions at noi- noon. <laughs> <laughs> ah, folks, it is Thursday, Ooh. Friday, Friday at 2 30. Uh, and Can I've already started drinking. Days? <laughs> Join the team. Pay for this. Oh, God. Oh, it's got to do the swoosh again. <laughs> okay, so every single no, no. transition. I'm going to turn off the swoosh now. I have to okay. wait for that. <laughs> Folks, it's been about a month since we've recorded. That's not Ooh. true either. What's it been? A week? It, not even. Not even a week. So we're we're punchy. <laughs> it's Friday. I, I don't know. Do you find that like Friday? I am I am never more tired than I am on a Friday. It doesn't matter what happened the week, whether it was a crazy week or not. Just like I think the concept of Friday just makes me uh, tired and punchy. But that's okay. All right. So enough of our nonsense. Uh, eight I'm, minutes in. Here we go. Eight minutes in. That's a shock to nobody. Uh, I really am excited to talk about this because Joshua Cronin is a, uh, I would say in this circle, a famous customizer specifically of Deep Space Nine figures from the Playmates line. His line of custom Deep Space Nine figures is goes on forever. Basically, if you, if you can imagine a Deep Space Nine character that didn't get a figure, uh, Joshua Cronin has made one of them. Um, and we've looked at some of them, I'm sure. We've, we've looked at some of them. They're amazing. But what really blew my mind is that forget the fig. I mean, don't forget the figures. The figures are amazing. Uh, he has actually built out the set by hand of Deep Space Nine. So That's uh, I think it is time to start. And he sent a million pictures. And so we're just going to talk our way through them uh, and react as they come through. So, Mike, let's take a look at a great overview of the set as he built it. A Double decker, multi platform set. Whoa, well, hold on a second. Yeah. Keith, I know you just said this. Yeah. But you know, I don't pay attention to anything you say. That's uh, clear. As I was leading, lo- as I was loading up the show today, I do my best not mm-hmm. to look at the actual pictures. And I was, but right, I was right, right. typing in all these different scenes and quarks and everything. Mm-hmm. I mm-hmm. thought what we were looking at today is an assortment of customs from people that build out Deep Space Nine. But no, this is all. This Cronin. is all one set that we're seeing an overview of here. So it's built out actually much like the shooting set (laughs) that they, uh, you know, on the Paramount stages where everything is sort of connected and using your space well. But this is the promenade going down the center that you see there with all of the other pieces of it attached to it just as the set was. And so this is all handmade. This isn't 3D printed. This isn't cobbling together other people's sets. This is all hand work with all of his figures put there. So that so that's a good overview altogether. But as we zoom into it, you can see he's lit it. And so there we are on the the two story promenade. Mike, I see your face. Ta- I think this talk. is gonna be this is gonna be my face for the next forty five minutes, however long this takes. <laughs> First. <laughs> The lighting is, so we talk about it all the time on the Deep Six Nine Show. Join us on YouTube. It's here in your feed. Uh, you can also watch my wife and I watch season three uh, as a patron That's member. That's right. But we always often talk about the lighting, Keith, how they keep it dark and gritty. And I think uh, Joshua knows that, and this he's paying his own homage to that. That shadows and lighting and, uh, and you know, and it's, it's really cool. And he's done with the photography here. It really does feel so immersive. You can just walk down it as if you were on the set. You just Great need to shrink depth, yourself down. Yeah. Make sure don't uh, bump into anybody, though. If you bump into them, you've just started a whole plot line. The, the Cardassians have lifted your wallet and are going to abduct you in some fashion, for sure. So here's another look down the promenade. And this is where, if you get the scale right, it looks it looks our size. Because Keith, as as you're going down with the camera, you ready to be really proud. I am ready to be really proud. Really to be ready to be proud. So here yeah. in the foreground, I see the the clearly the medical suite, the the triage mm-hmm. center, which tells me that directly across from that should be Quark's bar. Ah, indeed. Well, we're we're about to that that's that's good. Now uh, you'll also see interspersed through all of this, a lot of the custom figures 
uh, that Joshua built. And actually, I had to delete some of the pictures here so as not to spoil. Always big, looking out know, for me, buddy. Characters for later. Are you kidding me? the The entire show is watching you discover all these things for the first time. But if you see up top there, there's Akira in her uh, in her rescue outfit when they went on to Cardassia to uh, to rescue Lee Nollis. Here's the uh, of season two. <clears throat> O'Brien getting ready to go on uh, what he thinks is a, a leisurely vacation with Keiko, but that's going to turn out differently for him. It's ne- not for O'Brien. It's never leisurely yeah. anything for O'Brien. Uh, What's happening so over he, there? Are people at the Dabo table? Uh, that's the uh, on to the right. That's the replimat. Mm, yes. Okay. <clears throat> uh, which we they introduced in the beginning of season two. We'll get more shots of that. And here we are in the uh, and and we have the little kiosk. The you are here and the list of what's in the station, um, which is available. You can actually find what was written on it and see all the things on the station that we did see. There was a bowling alley. There's all Keith, sorts of. Now I have a I, I, this this doesn't ring true to me because Oda would never h- turn his back on Vedic Vedic Win. Uh, that's true. Well, Kai win now, but but that's this right. is she. She's got the she's got the Vedic hat. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you know, again, that's a custom that that didn't exist. But but that Quark's kiosk little, is awesome. That kiosk is amazing, and it's exactly what was on the on the show. And I believe he printed out the graphics from it and shrunk it down to make it on that side. So uh, if you want to know where the uh, where the Cinnabon is, that's where you go. We see some of the uh, the 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 Bajoran and Klingon and Federation signs up on the wall there. Here's an, I love this shot where you can really get a sense of the depth of the set. And this is how they did it in real life. And if you look at this, the, the picture right above me here, it's a very similar angle. Um, and those where are just have, those little like fairy lights. I think so. Yeah. Um, you just got a full, there's a, there's a, a Klingon with a just giant weapon. Batleth. Yeah. Batleth is what you're looking for. Thank you. Um, but also it's it's really handy to have um thinking about it from a production angle. I don't think I'd ever really considered this. Why, Mike? I'm gonna I'm gonna quiz you here. Mike, why is the promenade curved from a production angle, not from a story angle? From a story angle, it's a ring, right? Uh, but from the production angle, why is it curved? It's a ring that ostensibly goes around the whole thing, right? It does. Yeah. You run laps around that, I wonder. You um, sure can. But, but you're, angle- you're, you're producing the show. Why is it good to have a ring as opposed to a straight hallway? Uh, probably camera hiding, right? Like you could kind of <clears throat> come have around to the curve. You the back to, of yeah. it. And, yeah. and that way you have a lot better angles to shoot with. And because they never finish the, the front and the back end, it never has to end. Uh so, uh, yeah, so again, I think we on the left here, we're going to see some of the Bajoran Shrine. Do you see who's in the back, way in the back there? Coming through the metal detector? Yeah, through the metal, right. Is that Garrick? No, that's Tosk and the Hunter uh. of Tosk. <laughs> yeah, he shouldn't come through. He should stick. <clears throat> and uh, here we get an angle of Quarks, but you can see the balcony there. So that's that's uh, that's Jake and Nog's perving balcony. Mm-hmm. Is that uh, Morn in there? In the left? Of course it's Morn. Look well, at you sitting at the bar. Duh. Yeah, that's awesome. <clears throat> of course. And then here, again, you get a sense of the, the second ring of it, uh, which is so cool with the with the angled windows out. Uh, I mean, getting the two-story element of it is really, really, really cool. cool. It just allows you so many opportunities for photographs like this. Uh, fully Look, immersive. Jake's up there. Jake's on his perving back line up That's there. That's right. Jake and Nog are there perving on the. Uh, That's awesome. On, on the Vulcan ladies, uh, it's it's really cool. And I I like Quark's little like window kiosk into Quark's there. So if you want to just you know, take a quick roadie, mm-hmm. you can hop in the window there as opposed to going fully into the bar. There's the shot of the replimat. If you uh, if you didn't want to go to Quark's, right. Uh, you know, and again, more custom figures all the way through in the back here. We should break them down and start doing them uh, one by one. But it's just really cool in this immersive environment. So let's let's go somewhere else. So right, we, Keith, we've walked we've walked our way down the promenade. Let's go into Quarks. What do you say? Oh, let's do it. Wait for the whoosh. Oh, no whoosh this time, yeah. 
<laughs> they're gonna have, okay so here once again with the playing you know having the multiple stories we have the tables up top where keiko and o'brien are squabbling while they're looking down at quark you know if people want to get uh, thrown off of that or you know abducted because quarks is closed <clears throat> for you know 22 of the 26 hours right right <laughs> for some reasons you have the dabo tables in the back there uh one of the things Ooh. that josh Wood does incredibly well is is ferengis and so he has a whole lineup of uh, ferengi customs so you have some you have different versions of quark and nog and rom but you have the bartenders all represented there that dabo table looks amazing uh and and the the that backdrop that they have the with the sort of bajoran uh images on the back there god i mean the amount of work it must have taken to build by hand to cut to paint to sculpt to attach well, and all the, like, the artwork and the facade pieces really add an element of scale which is great i mean ever and and so here you can really see just how big that set is uh, is that wood? Are the floors, are this paneling wood or is it, is he using uh, like a plastic? I think it's a, like a sculpting cardboard or like a, like a, um, like those poster board stock. I, I, I should ask him, um, you know, and the, the stairs I, that, that looks 3d printed the, the, mm-hmm. the stairs down. I don't know if they were 3d printed for Trek or he, he did something else, uh, there but um and what about all the little like pieces those must be 3D the, printed as well like you're definitely they're different like things topping the tables the cups and the, the yeah i mean I, I recognize some of them from the playmates line of choking hazards but well, that's a great angle there yep. again playing with the lighting this is how it's more you know lit like it is on the show and uh, both from the production element, having those sort of s- sticks going on there causes great shadows and depth mm-hmm. in the lighting, and, and you're able to hear as well. Um, yeah, you well, really okay. get a feel of like the busy the busy bar at at at, at work, and you can see. So so we're now looking back in the opposite direction. It's it's two story on the other side. So you see Quark's bar, uh, the regular bar that we we see a lot on the far side of this picture here. But above that is another layer. Um, again, with a whole mess of different, we have, we see Jake and wearing different space jammies on the right there. Uh, it's great. Uh, many other characters I'm, I'm intentionally not mentioning. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's, there's another angle from the top and you can see those, those sticks are, are really cool. And, oh, this is a great one. You can see that the, uh, the floor levels are stacked up. There's steps and levels leading up to the Dabo table there in the center. Um, oh, yeah. Again, it's it speaks to the tr- I mean tremendous set design, um, uh, you know, on the actual show, but also all of this work. Here we have another Tongo table, with, and this is not the 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 one the that Dazbot? we reviewed from Dazbot. This is a custom one that looks like Joshua built. There's Mayhardu. They didn't make a Mayhardu figure. And then here's where you see all of those other Ferengis playing. Uh, the chairs wow, look me, like the Dazbot chairs too, though. They look very similar. I don't know. I, I should, we, you know, at some point we should just have had Joshua on. We could have just yeah, asked that's all these questions. Um, cool. But again, more. It looks like great. multiple Odos there. Is that something I'm where I'm not to know? Uh. Well, I have met some soup odos. So we, we, the soup, yes, the the soup people, the 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 other goo odos. We're just starting season three, folks. Um, yes, I see exactly who was represented there in the center, and it's an amazing custom. But I'm not going to tell Mike about it yet. So, All right. uh, like Is I that said, Odo's brother alert. Frodo. Frodo, yes, it's Frodo, Frodo and Odo uh, out Stupid. to throw the ring. That's a cool picture. That's a great picture. Quark holding court. Uh and, and look at the backlit bar too. Yeah, really rad. Right. I, I don't mean, think I don't think it's backlit. I think it's frontlit. It just looks backlit. It's frontlit. It just looks backlit because of the way it's painted. That looks like it's been I don't know how we how we built that one. Yeah, like that that's or cool. Whatever. That is cool. I mean, you know, Morn's in his chair, Keiko's there, slamming him down because she's not happy. Uh 
Wow. I, there's a subtext here. There's some fanfic right here. Oh, What's Morn, that night with Morn and Keiko? Hey, Morn gets more than like any other character on the show. It's amazing. Take two of these uh, and I'll see you in the morning. There's there's hope for me. I need to I need some more puffy coat abs. <laughs> <laughs> I can I can take my beard off and embrace my jowls. Keith, if you've been drinking all night, mm-hmm. maybe getting into some funny business with more some shenanigans you might wake up in the morning and find yourself in the infirmary in need of some uh you know maybe some antibiotics yeah anything some sort possible. of a uh, some sort of a, a, a anti-microbial cream or some some sort uh and here we are in the infirmary um and again this is all you know as we saw from the first overshot look these, these sets are connected to each other so you, awesome. if you were Four and a half inches tall, you could literally walk from Quarks directly across the promenade into the infirmary uh, here. And uh, what's what's really interesting is that you know we don't get a lot of great full like uh, establishing shots of the infirmary, but you can see from the original set designs what's there, what's part of it, and how incredibly accurate this is. Uh, and here we are. Here we are. We're, we're treating. Uh, we're treating Garrick in the episode "The Wire." Remember that? Yeah, he was pissed. He's, he's pissed. Well, he, he had his little chip in his head. He had to had to it's basically work through. getting dopamine shot up. In he him. was he was getting dopamine shot up in him. Look at that console. Yeah, dude. Real real cool. Uh, you know, being able to print out some of these graphics in the right scale. And uh, and put them on stickers and put them down there. And again, the this is where just great photography happens because if you think about it, like I'm assuming he's probably using an iPhone or something like that, having to reach into the set, get the lighting right, get the angle right. Uh, really, really cool. It's it's so immersive. Well, then even these like way. screens, these screens are so much so indicative of the things you see on the screens on the show. Yeah. And he just like went in there and, and drew them. The lines are straight, so he clearly got his ruler out. Or or he printed them. Yeah, they could the be stickers. from the show. Yeah. Yeah, I would imagine most that's of them. That's probably a good goes, way to go about Alcar it. looks like that's that's a way to do it. Um, but again, if, if you look at the screen right up, uh, you know, center there, this is where the details, it's all about the details. Yeah. And that he's been able to yes, put that screen at an angle. Because nothing on Deep Space Nine is straight ahead, like we said with the round, but none of the screens are flat, at a, you know, at a, at a ninety degree angle. It's always tilted. It's tilted up. It's tilted down. And he was able to actually accomplish that by building that out. And so there, there you have the whole set there, really cool. of the uh, of the infirmary. Really, Who, really that? cool. That's an that's another custom figure. That's that's one of the Bajoran nurses. He's he's got them all. That's that's not a playmates figure. That's a oh, custom. he's feeling better, Keith. He's feeling better. So now that we can actually tell the entire story of the wire in mm-hmm. this, uh, yeah. So now they're now they're going to sit down on the replimat and uh, and have lunch together, as always. Um, another another great another great view. The angles are all right. I mean, amazing. It's it's just God the amount of work, yeah, the amount no, of work no that doubt. went into the infirmary here. It's crazy. Well, should so, we pop uh, over to security? Well, yeah. So let's, you know, let's say after you, you got your penicillin, Odo heard about what you got up to. And like, you know, we still have some more things to talk about. You sir. got some splaining to do. You have some splaining to do here in Odo's office with his desk and his chair there. So many iconic scenes take place in there. Does he have windows? Are those transparent windows? It appears they so, are. Keith. Yep. Oh, so cool. And uh, that's, just just casually. Oh, that's a beaming Odo. Oh, they made a beaming Odo? No, they didn't. Oh, he made he, that's a custom beaming? Yeah. Yeah, they never made a beaming Odo. And uh, yeah, and you can see the the green lights behind Odo there that in from the uh, from the shot from the show fully created cool. there angles, graphics, and here from above, he's got all the holding cells. That's awesome. I mean, come on. If you find yourself in the clink. If you're in the clink, there it is. The whole that dude the from Duet, thing. right? Not Duet, uh yeah, uh-huh. Duet. Yeah, yep. Duet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Chilling out in there. Uh and uh, amongst many I mean, quarks in there every five minutes or so. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, but there, like all inclusive, you've got the little, you know, the white, the bottom there to represent the the force fields going up. Yep, um, really cool. Really, really cool. I mean, just endless. This set goes on and on and on. Uh, in fact, there's even more, Mike. We have other cool stuff, Keith. Other cool stuff. Guess what we have here? Do you remember what this is and what this, uh, what episode we're referencing yeah, here? Yeah, that's the lottery one one where the other guy starts the other thing. We couldn't really figure out what the plot was, but the other guy starts the competing bar. Yes, Chris Sarandon uh, yeah. and in the episode Rivals where he has his little things uh which changed the, the you know rotational something and he's of like the hooking up with the old lady trying to and they're all pulling cons it's like uh-huh. a little bit of yeah, yeah, scoundrels in there it was, yeah. it, was a, it was a con conning a con con but wait go go back one for a second that chris sarandon figure they never made that's oh, a that's, custom that's a custom that is a Even custom the little purple jewelry things look cool it is flawless and looks like it's instantly Look, there's even a little one. Look, there's a tiny is. one because the He's tiny the, one, and then the he made one. the big ones. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's an amazing figure, and, and like so fun. Now this one, uh, Mike, Mike has not seen this environment, uh, so I'm not going to talk about it too much. But we are seeing Vic Fontaine's Beauty School Dropout. Uh huh. Yep. Mm-hmm. That's basically. Uh, the vibe Dude, the there, tablecloths, the lighting, it's classy, the piano. I mean, that's class. The the lights on the on the side of the stage there are really, really cool. Uh, and you can see, you know, everybody's there hanging out at Vicks. Got their formal uh, wear on, yeah. Got some got some formal wear on. Keep going. I don't want I don't want to spend too much time hey! on Vicks because it's a it, it's a spoiler alert for, for Alamaremi count to four. Alamaremi, then one more. Alamaremi, it's Alamaremi, it's Alamaremi. <laughs> That's where your head explodes because Keith gets real high. <laughs> yes, there is the Wadi and the whole game. That's that game is awesome. A, astounding. Epic. Cool. So cool. I mean, it's got all the shaps oh, there. Oh, this is the uh, Bajoran. And wait, go go back. The 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 Wadi figure. Uh, guess what? They didn't make a Wadi figure. That's a custom too. Awesome, unbelievable. Uh, so we go on here. Here's uh, the orb in the Bajoran shrine. Bur- the, Burial needs to open that seventeen times for for an, per episode. Yeah, well, we've got to have some sort of a reason to have a shirt off. Uh, but you've got all the steps Ooh, here. Okay. Here we are with Garrick's shop. He's got all of his fabrics. Out. He's, he's a simple tailor, folks. He's just a simple tailor. Uh, so he had to make many little costumes for that, too. Yeah. Hanging on uh, racks, by the way. Hanging on racks. Really, really cool. Here we have a shot into the infirmary. Guess who? Can, do you remember who Bashir is talking with there? The floaty lady. The ba- the, the, the anti-gravity <laughs> lady. Okay. Or Melora. Yeah, uh, it. yeah. <laughs> shake, 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 Melora, wear your weird wire suit. Uh, yeah. Uh, again, didn't make that figure. That's a custom, too. We These should suspend all... her from wire so she can float up while they bang. <laughs> well, Joshua, the gauntlet has been thrown down. <laughs> Mike wants to see the figures bang <laughs> while floating from wires. Uh, why did I do that? I didn't say it. I said <laughs> it out loud. Why you say any of the things you say? <laughs> oh, my Whoa, goodness. Whoa, that's uh, awesome. I didn't see the... I guess they're out of order, but... Yeah, well, that's... Yeah, I, I, I put them out. I must must have messed up. But there, you see the, the Bajoran shrine in the temple there, uh, right there on the promenade. There's another angle of Garrick's shop. I mean, there's... And there's the shrine from the outside, the... The entrances to all the shops on on Deep Space Nine always have such interesting doors and ways to get in and out. And I think he's done a really good job representing. There's another custom Vic Fontaine figure, which of course they never made. Uh, you've got the bar. I mean, just keeps going and going. And it's got an exit sign. That's amazing. It's incredible. Just uh, incredible. Just incredible. Uh, I want to go back to the. 
Yeah. yeah, go back to go back to the main thing. So now you can see how it's all constructed there. So as we're walking down on the promenade, we have to our our right, we have Garrick's shop. Uh, to our left, I don't even know what. The, uh, oh, that that's the entrance, um, the docking the ring oh, entrance. Okay, yeah. Uh, then we have Odo's, and then uh, uh, further back there, you have the infirmary and the shrine. And to your right, you have Quark's bar, and then you have Vix next to Quark's bar, which of which makes perfect sense to, to me, not to Mike, but below that is the replimat. I mean, that's it. I mean that now, now you're, you're wondering what, what are you asking? What's the last thing you're, you're asking about now? Ops. Where's ops. He's built ops, but we're going to save it for later. Uh, okay. Because, because it's, it's a little overwhelming to do all at once. And I think he's going to send more pictures. But that's it up there, right? It. Upstairs. Uh, no, up, up there he has some of the uh, next gen stuff. So okay. we have the next gen holodeck and the looks the he he's adapted a next gen uh, sick bay and oh wow that's a really and cool I'm gonna tell you you know look kind of seeing where the corner of his room is and the carpeting and stuff it's a, that's a reasonable size that's not like a you got to get divorced size of, of <laughs> model. <laughs> That, well, that's that's true. Well, I mean, it depends on like, do you have a house? Do you have an apartment? Yeah, that's a good point. Are you in New York City? Because yeah. like New York City, that's definitely divorceable. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh uh, no, but that is amazing. That is such a. There it is. Whoosh. Oh, I, I took away it. the thing, but it, not the thing. <laughs> it went by too fast. Yeah, should have known. <laughs> it was it was at warp. Uh, yeah, I mean, that is, I mean, I, I don't know what to say about that. It's just an extraordinary work. It's one of a kind. Mm -hmm. There's only, there's only one in the world. Um, so it's not, I'm not, I'm not going to see it in the mail. Keith is what you're saying. Unfortunately, I don't think it's going to show up in the mail, but you know, uh, I, I think uh, you, you want, you want to build, you want to build two more. <laughs> oh no, but it's, it's, it's extraordinary work. So, um, Again, Joshua Cronin, uh, fabulous, fabulous work. Thank you so much for sharing that. Uh, really awesome. Allowing us to, really cool. to uh, show it on the show. We will definitely uh, show ops as well as that builds out. Um, so if you are like Joshua, have built more custom play sets, we're definitely going to do more episodes with that. It doesn't have to be as a it doesn't have to be a completely working set that you could film a movie on. Uh, it can be smaller yep. pieces. Uh, you can send that to us at look at my Star Trek toys at gmail .com. Um, You can also find us on Facebook and Instagram and all that various stuff. Uh, you can or or leave a comment below. We uh, would love to see what else you've come up with. We will be doing many more episodes of custom figures and custom sets. Um, we got one next week, I think. We do, yeah, Next week, we're going to have another custom figures episodes with some fun other stuff. Uh, really exciting. Keep sending your stuff. Look at my Star Trek toys at gmail.com. Uh, Mike, what else should they do? Keith said it. Like, subscribe. Check us out at patreon.com slash K and M if you're interested there. Additionally, you can't. Where'd it go? I, I I didn't see it. It's not supposed to be happening, Keith. <laughs> nope. Oh okay. wow! It was the sonic boom from the previous one. We're still uh -huh. waiting to hear the because usually you see the thing, then you hear the boom. Mm -hmm. But I don't know where that that sound. Is. Oh, I know why it happened, Keith. I know what happened. Now <laughs> yeah, I think I it's all too. good. Now I could do this. Hey! Ooh, wow, that was worth it. <laughs> Uh, like, subscribe, watch our other shows, all the stuff. Join the patron list, guys. Send us cool stuff. We're having fun. Hope you're having fun. Leave us a comment. If you're new, if you've been checking us out long time, let us know. Uh, the views are ticking up. We're enjoying ourselves. Hope you are, too. We can't wait till next time, man. Yes, thank you so much for watching. We will see you back here next week with another episode of Look at my Star Trek toys! Whoosh! <laughs>